Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's an interesting point, but I, I want to keep it. I like to keep it simple. Yeah, I agree. I agree, Josh. But, but, but I brought fireworks and chickens and a confetti cannon. I mean, I set it down here somewhere. I, Listen, I, I, I hear you, Gonzo, but but I, I think Mika and the band. I think they're plenty. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, Joshua, whatever you do, I'm sure it'll be great. Well, thank you, guys. It's, it means a lot that you're here for this big celebration. Oh, would not have missed it. Josh, tomorrow. Josh, tomorrow, 15 seconds to curtain. Cue the band. Break a leg, Josh. Thanks, yeah, guys. Or, or a window. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Woo! Gotta be what I got. Going to you know what's happening here? You've got, we've got thousands of our fans right out here. Amika, they tell me there are hundreds of thousands of people watching online. Well, that means we got to do it big, Josh. Let's have some fun. Let's, Let's do it. Let's have some fun. How are we doing out there? Woo! Well, good morning. Uh, what a week this has been already. I hope that you've been following along on our road to destination D23. We just announced World of Frozen in Hong Kong Disneyland will open on November 20th. You got the first look inside our Zootopia land in Shanghai. It looks beautiful. And you learned all about our next cruise ship, the beautiful Disney treasure. And listen, everyone, there is so much great stuff happening. And now we're finally here celebrating together at Destination D23. I know at these events, maybe you're used to me standing up here and doing most of the talking, but we're gonna try something a little bit different today if you're okay with that. I brought some special guests with me who have some exciting updates to share. I also wanna keep talking about the future and I wanna keep talking about our creative process. And you guys know me by now, there are bound to be a few surprises before we are done today. A few surprises, right guys? We're looking forward to that. Well, as you heard, the theme of this year's event is all about our Disney 100 celebration. 100 years, Mika, one, and band, 100 years. This is amazing, you gotta stop and think about that for a moment. And as Bob said, few companies have ever reached such a huge milestone. And what's sustained us for a century is our commitment to creativity and storytelling for our fans. This is in everything that we do, everything that we do, and we all carry these Disney stories with us, sharing them with our loved ones and then passing them on. And these characters become part of our lives. They become part of our family story. For me, it's Mickey Mouse. I think you all know I'm a big Mickey Mouse fan. But for my son, it's Olaf. Cinderella's for my wife is what Rapunzel is to my daughter. We're from different generations and found those connections through different heroes. But the fundamental truth of a Disney story, it remains the same. When my wife and I see our kids fall in love with these characters, it reminds us all over again why we all love Disney so much. It's our connection to these stories that binds us together. Because there is so much power in a story well told, and no one, no one tells stories like Disney. Now, I love hearing your stories. And recently, uh, I met a guest and her fiance right here at Walt Disney World, and they told me they had just gotten engaged aboard one of our cruise ships. Then, they're planning their wedding for this February at the Grand Floridian. And then, they're thinking about an Adventures by Disney trip for their honeymoon. This is their Disney story. The tens of millions of people who walk through our gates every year, they all have their stories too. And each one of you in this crowd today, you have your own as well. Now the details may change from person to person, but we all share this fundamental feeling a Disney experience gives us. You know what we call that? We call that magic. 
Maybe you still remember your first ride on Dumbo when you were young, and then decades later, you sat with your own child, maybe on that very same elephant. Maybe you chart the growth of your kids as they get old enough for Slinky Dog Dash, and you're on to Space Mountain, and then you're on Tron. Maybe you and your friends return at the same time, year after year, because it's through Disney that you stay connected to one another's lives. That's why these big anniversary celebrations are so important to me and so important to you. Disney's all about moving forward, but once in a while, it's nice to reflect on all of our happy memories. I can give you one more of mine. I just told somebody this story the, the other day. I can still picture, to this day, standing up here on the stage, my first ride as a kid on Peter Pan's flight at Disneyland. Anybody like Peter Pan's flight? One of my favorites. Every time I go on that ride, I'm instantly transported back to that time, sitting with my parents in that swinging pirate ship, sailing out over London. And these memories are so strong because we share them with people that we love. And I can tell all of you this, we're gonna help you create many, many more memories as we head into Disney's next 100 years. And speaking of memories, I've been thinking about the last time that I was in this room with all of you. Some of you were probably here. Who was here the last time? Okay, so a fair amount of you. And if you remember at that time, we were focused on getting back on track. And wow, has the team been busy. We've built so much momentum over the past couple of years, rolling out nearly 200 new experiences around the world. We opened two Avengers campuses, one at Disney California Adventure and the other at Walt Disney Studios Park in Paris. Plus, we reimagined two more lands at the Disneyland Resort. Earlier this year, we opened our fantastic new take on Mickey's Toontown. Who's been to Mickey's Toontown? If you haven't, please check it out. It is magical. And then just last week, we debuted San Francisco Square. Anybody seen it? Gorgeous. I especially love how this land looks at night, and I hope you all get a chance to get out there and see it. We opened two beautiful new resort hotels, and we refreshed over 7,000 rooms across our properties. Of course, we set sail on a glorious new cruise ship, the Disney Wish. I hope you're all enjoying your Wish magic bands that you have on. And we unveiled seven major new attractions, including Tron at the Magic Kingdom. And of course, Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Woo! Rewind. Uh, we can keep going all night if you want, big guy. Anybody been on Guardians? I can tell you what, I have so, I, so many of you have told me how much you love that attraction. I love it too. I recommend maybe two times in a row, not too many more than that. But guys, this is why I'm excited to share a surprise with you. As part of your special event at Epcot tonight, we've arranged for you to have Cosmic Rewind all to yourselves. For a couple of hours. excited about that. I thought you'd be excited about it. Two times in a row, maybe Woo! three. <laughs> Take it easy. All right, Mika, thank you for that. Uh, so continuing this, <laughs> continuing this theme of the past two years, we've premiered over 100 new shows of all shapes and sizes. We did it on stages, we did it on water, we did it up in the skies. We also introduced nearly 70 new characters bringing you your favorites right off of the screen into the parks. Just a few weeks ago, that's right, Ahsoka arrived in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge at Disneyland. You've all been watching the show? Yeah? Okay, my family and I are glued to it uh, every night. 
uh, and, and I love it, and we at the parks love Ahsoka as well. Which is why I'm so excited to tell you that next spring, she'll become part of Star, Star Tours at Disneyland Park, Disneyland Woo! Paris, and right here at Disney, Disney Hollywood. Woo! And since we're talking about characters, you want to hear something else fun? Yeah. Of course you do. Uh, we'll soon be welcoming another character, Asha, from the new Disney animated film, Wish, to Epcot, Disneyland, and Disneyland Paris. Now you're gonna, you're gonna hear more about her tomorrow if you go to the Walt Disney Studios Showcase, so please go check that out and stay tuned for more there. I'm so proud, if it's not clear, of what our teams have accomplished around the world for these past two years. The team is daring to dream bigger and bolder than we ever have before. Over the course of this next de decade, we're gonna deliver so many great new experiences across all of our destinations around the world. And I'm telling you this, and I'm guaranteeing this, more attractions, we're gonna give you more shows, you got a lot more characters coming, we've got more lands coming, and more things that you all can't even imagine are possible. Let me just start with one that, that I'm excited about, Tiana's Bayou Adventure, which is opening next year. Both at Disney World and Disneyland. Now, as you know, we've been sharing a lot of our creative process with you for over the, the past year. Here you're seeing a look inside of the, an, the audio animatronic workshop at Walt Disney Imagineering. Uh, these folks are doing amazing work. They're hard at work on all the figures that we are just packing into this attraction. Uh, it's going to be such a great exper experience bringing you a new story from Tiana's World that picks off right where that classic film left off. You know, while we're talking about princesses, we just celebrated World Princess Week and we hosted our first ever Once Upon a Wish party. This was a, a very special event. It was our biggest wish branding event ever. And it was right here at Walt Disney World. More than 50 wish kids and their families spent time with their favorite characters and they, they attended a royal ball and dressed as their favorite princesses. And, our cast members from Disney Consumer Products, they dress them up like royalty. I have to say, it was one of my proudest nights in 25 years as a cast member. And we had nearly 500 of our cast that participated in the party. And every time we're involved with Make-A-Wish, our cast go above and beyond to make sure that every one of those dreams really does come true. And I want to thank everyone, all of our cast members who were involved with this event. Our, you all know this, our cast, these are the real magic makers. And, and I love being out in the parks all the time, seeing them in action. And they have the absolute coolest jobs. I want you to just take a look at these photos. We have balloon sellers, we have candy makers, we have costume designers, we have pyrotechnic experts. We got Mika and the band over here. We have <laughs> sign painters. We have folks who spend the whole year dreaming up new ways to celebrate special events and holidays. We also have our amazing Disney Global Ambassadors representing Woo! our cast from all the destinations. They're here with us today, somewhere out, out here. Uh, I hope you all get a chance to meet them. Oh, there they are, right here. Look at these guys. So much love and energy coming from our, our ambassadors. Now, they also have their own panel tomorrow, which is gonna be really exciting. Make sure you get over there and check that out. Now, all in all, there are 170,000 casts around the world who each deliver their own magic in unique and special ways. You see them every day. Today, I'd like to personally recognize one of them. This is a performer celebrating 50 years with the Muppets Studio. Now, this cast member has brought you Gonzo, Dr. Bunsen, and so many other favorite characters. Everybody, please welcome Dave Bowles. <laughs> Welcome. We have 10,000 of our biggest fans here, so welcome to, to D23. Do we have some Muppet fans out Woo! there? Yeah! Thank you. 
Thank you. So you got 50 year career. Where does it begin? Well, one of the earliest things that happened was I was nine years old and Walt Disney had a television series called Disneyland. And each week, amongst all of the stories that they told, they showed teases of the construction of the Disneyland Park. Now, for a nine-year-old, this was just nirvana. I <laughs> loved that place before I ever got there, and all I wanted was to be a designer of Disneyland. It was just, I, I, you know, and, and it, it lasted for many, 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 many years. And I still love the parks. I love it. Well, so do I. Uh, I think it's safe to say, based on the crowd's reaction here, the Muppets are more popular than ever. So what do you think it is that uh, creates this energy and the Muppets pass on from generation to generation? Well, uh, what we try to do is have fun, first of all. And we, we love the characters to have an internal life. And so we make sure that the characters are funny. We do our best to tell a story. But underneath it all, there's always a heart. And that's absolutely crucial to us. Everything is character-based, and it comes from a feeling of celebration of diversity, enjoying each other, supporting each other. And we never say it, but that's what's going on underneath. Do you have a favorite? No. Is that a fair question to ask? Well, I, I, <laughs> I, I love doing all these characters. They're all aspects of personality. I have like 20 or something. And they are literally a little part of yourself that you isolate and amplify and make into a character and try to make lovable. And so if, if I do Gonzo for a long time and then I get a chance to do Beauregard, I love to go to that place in myself. So you're not picking a favorite, which is fine. I, I, I don't really have a favorite. Gonzo's the easiest one to do because he's so free, he can say anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I really enjoy let's be, it. Let's be a little careful up here. Yeah. Dave, Dave, uh, you, you, know, you know that obviously you couldn't celebrate 50 years without obviously some of your closest friends. So, of course, I invited a few of them to celebrate yeah, with us. Yeah. We give up. Here they come. Hey. 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 Let's get it. Let's get it. You guys are looking good. So Kermit, Miss Piggy, thanks for being here with us today to celebrate Dave 50 uh, years. Well, you know what, Josh, we wouldn't miss it. Of course not. He's my biggest fan. Uh, I am. <laughs> uh, Piggy, uh, don't you mean that you are his biggest fan? Hmm? What did I say? <laughs> I adore Dave. He's the one who empties my trash cans. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, actually, that's Beauregard. They look the same to me, but if you're so sorry. <laughs> I don't have time for this. I must go and prepare for my big musical number. Ta-ta! Uh, -huh. uh what's, the, what's the big musical number here? I uh, don't think there is one, but uh, you know what? I better go, and uh, congratulations, Dave. I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Bye, Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Well... Let's, let's see how this, day, this goes, Dave. Uh, congrats again on your on your 50 years. 50 years. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He's brought so much joy to, to the world. I hope you guys enjoyed that. And, and for me, that was super fun. And that's what this is all about, right? It's about having fun. And meeting Dave, for me, is definitely fun. I grew up watching The Muppets. It sounds like many of you did as well. He is an absolute legend in the industry. And I'm guessing, just guessing, maybe, that that is not the last time that you're going to see the Muppets uh, this morning, called by a little bit of a hunch based on what Piggy just said. <laughs> All right. As I mentioned earlier, there is incredible momentum happening throughout Disney parks right now. We are launching into a new era of boundless growth and innovation. Our future is full of endless possibilities with new stories and experiences coming to life all around the world, from Arendelle to Zootopia, and then everything in between. And I've asked the teams from all of our destinations to send us some sneak peeks into their works, and we're gonna start with World of Frozen at Hong Kong Disneyland. As I mentioned earlier, our first frozen theme land will open on November 20th, so not too far away. And we've put together a special look at the land just for you, so check it out. Hello from Hong Kong Disneyland. Today I would like to show you the night beauty of World of Frozen. I would also like to introduce Michelle, Executive Creative Director at Walt Disney Imagineering. 
Michelle, over to you as we explore this stunning landscape together. Sure thing. Once you step into Wilder Frozen, the iconic Arundel Castle will come into view. Beautiful reflections of the castle, decorated with ice magic, adorn the harbor surface, making it a picture-perfect moment. Next to the castle, we have the Arundel Forest, filled with enchanting celebratory attractions and offerings. One of the highlights of the forest is the Wandering Oaken's Sliding Slays Coaster, where you will discover a mesmerizing waterfall that seems to cascade from the melting snow, creating a breathtaking sight, highlighting nature's beauty. Deep in the village, you can find some of Frozen's iconic landmarks from the movies, including Elsa's Ice Palace atop the North Mountain's highest peak, the clock tower where Anna danced with Prince Hans while singing Love is an Open Door, and of course, the Friendship Fountain which commemorates the love between Anna and Elsa. Here, guests will be able to explore, believe, and be part of the Frozen story. We'll see you soon at World of Frozen. It's pretty amazing. Looks good, doesn't it? It's gorgeous. But Josh, I was wondering, could you push, pull some strings and get me one just like that? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, maybe I could do that. <laughs> maybe I'll, I'll, I'll think about that. Now listen, in case you guys were wondering, uh, those images are so beautiful. Uh, that wasn't a model of the land that you just saw. That's the real thing. It's like you just stepped into the movie. I had a chance to get in there just a few weeks ago. It is gorgeous. And that's the first time that we've shown it at night, just for all of you. Uh, I think it's beautiful and I think our fans are gonna love it. Now, we're gonna have more of those exclusive sneak peeks sprinkled throughout the morning. But I've also invited some special guests to be with us in person today. And they have their own great updates to share. And I thought that maybe we begin right here at the Magic Kingdom. Any, uh, any Haunted Mansion fans in the house? I thought so. Well, at, at D23 Expo last year, I told you that we have someone special on his way to the mansion right here at Walt Disney World. And I know everybody's here. Everybody here is excited to see the Hatbox Ghost, right? Woo! Well, to tell you more about him, please welcome Disney Imagineer, Mr. Daniel Joseph. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm so excited to talk to you about one of my favorite attractions, the Haunted Mansion, and one of its most legendary residents, the Hatbox Ghost. <laughs> Guys, where uh, where have you been? You just missed Dave. <laughs> mm. Who's Dave? Yes. <laughs> you know what? Never mind, Uncle Deadly. It's always nice to see you. Of course it is. Now, since you're here discussing the haunted mansion in front of all these people, <laughs> Gonzo and I do have a question we have long pondered. Well, we're on kind of a tight schedule. <laughs> There are always exceptions. Excellent. Our friend, the ghost host, says that there are 999 happy haunts, but room for a thousand. My question oh. is as follows. Does the Hatbox ghost finally round out the residential tally to 1,000? <laughs> mm. <laughs> you are extra spooky today, Deadly. I love it. Uh, Daniel, I think he's finished. You can answer. Uh, okay. Well, Uncle Deadly, actually, no sorry. The Hatbox Ghost was one of the original 999 haunts, but left quickly after the mansion was discovered by us foolish mortals. For all these years, we've been wondering where he went. Oh. Uh, did you check behind that giant stack of hat boxes in the attic? <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we didn't think of that, Gonzo, but we're just glad he's back and he's not waiting for any sympathetic vibrations to materialize either. He's creepy. He's showing up wherever and whenever he wants because he's not really a happy haunt. 
In fact, he's a very, very unhappy haunt. No! An unhappy haunt, yes. Yeah. Very clever, Mr. Joseph. <laughs> well, it a... seems we'll just have to keep looking for our happy 1,000th then, won't we? Any volunteers? <laughs> <laughs> I guess that answers that. Uh, thank you, Daniel. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yes, uh, well, Debbie, you are really good at that. I know. You should hear my monorail spiel. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Hurry back. Woo! So now, so now that you know a little more about our Hatbox ghost, I am fiendishly excited to share that you will see him for the first time in late November here at the Hardy Mansion at Walt Disney World. Here's a first look just for you. As you can imagine, he's been dying to return to the mansion, and we can't wait for him to arrive too. Since we're already talking about Magic Kingdom, we have some exciting news to share about something that's happening not too far from the mansion. My fellow Imagineer, Chris Beatty, will be up next to fill you in. And before we get to that, though, we have a cool update for you from Disney California Adventure. Let's watch. Hi, from Avengers Campus at Disney California Adventure Park. At D23 Expo last year, we revealed that our next attraction in Avengers Campus will allow us to assemble superheroes from across the multiverse to battle King Thanos. For more than two years, superheroes from multiple worlds have been assembling at Avengers Campus to help train the next generation of recruits, us. Now, as the story goes, the Avengers are developing a new technology that will allow Avengers Campus to become the hub of a new multi-world mission spanning the universe. Thanks to the unique collaborations between inventors at Avengers Campus, the heroes have created a new vehicle capable of jumping between these worlds and even realities on planet Earth and beyond. The design combines elements of Tony Stark's time suits with Xandarian jump points and Wakandan technology to create a vehicle that can transport heroes to remote worlds in a matter of moments. This new vehicle combines portal technology and flight capabilities to maneuver through the skies, meaning heroes can deploy anywhere they are needed. And with a new generation of recruits like us to aid these superheroes, the multiverse will be safer than ever before. When this new multi-world initiative comes online, Avengers Campus recruits will be able to level up their training and join some favorite superheroes on missions to new worlds. We'll keep you briefed on your upcoming mission as all the details emerge. See you soon. I wish I could, every day I could go to work like that and walk in and music Well, we can play. go with you wherever you go. Uh, maybe. Just take us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well look, I'm really excited to be here today. And first off, how cool was that video from Brent? That's going to be amazing. And I can't wait to jump on that jet vehicle and go explore the galaxy. I think it's going to be incredible. Um, I'm excited to be here because, you know, um, this is always a, a blast for us and, and to get up on stage and be a part of this experience. So first, um, I would like to just talk about a few things. Number one being, you know, Daniel just mentioned the Haunted Mansion, which of course was one of the original attractions that opened at the Magic Kingdom back in 1971. But there was a second attraction that uh, we want to talk about today that also opened over in Frontierland uh, at that same time. Anyone got a guess what it is? Country Bears! Country Bear Jamboree, you're right, you're right. So look, we at Imagineering love the Country Bears as much as you do as fans, which is why I'm thrilled to tell you that next year, they're going to be learning some new songs and performing a whole new act. Woo! That's right. We're envisioning this new tape on the classic Jamboree as an homage to the classic musical reviews of Nashville. To reinforce that idea, 
we created this brand new poster for uh, the Jamboree done in that classic variety show style. And spoiler alert, each of you will be receiving one at the end of this session. Now, when the new show debuts, the Bears will reinterpret their favorite Disney songs in, a, in different genres of country music. Think rockabilly, bluegrass, pop country, and a lot more. And we're working with some fantastic Nashville musicians to get the authentic sound just right. You guys want to hear a little bit? Yeah. All right, so this is a video we captured from a recent recording session. Let's, let's play it. Today we're doing Bear Necessities for the Country Bear Jamboree. That's a very revered musical attraction for Disney World. Let's just play the intro one time. We can do it on the one. We're turning the fiddle off. Drums are not in. Let's give this thing a try. We're rolling. Necessities, the simple player necessities. Forget about your worries and your struggles. I'm with those player necessities. That's how a player can rest in ease. The simple player necessities of life. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Put a star on that, Okay, so you can see why we are so excited about this one. The music is going to be amazing, and this show will still have the fun and friendly tone that we all love about the Country Bears. Um, and with those famous characters, Henry, Trixie, Big Al. Uh, did somebody say bear? Well, you all know we at Imagineer love to conduct extensive research into everything we do in all of our projects. So please welcome our resident bear consultant, Fozzie Bear! Hey, how do the country bears catch fish with their bare hands? <laughs> so, Fozzie, you do know a lot about bears, right? Well, of course, Chris. For example, what do you call a bear with no teeth? A gummy bear! <laughs> All right, well, that's not exactly what I was talking about, but uh, okay. Well, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, <laughs> but I can do this all day. Yeah, but I don't think we can bear it. <laughs> no? No? Uh, all right. Well, Fozzie, uh, you know, I think we've reached our bear pun limit in this presentation. Oh, okay, okay. I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> Everyone. All right, so since we're talking about the Magic Kingdom, there's one more thing I want to share with you this morning. Uh, it's something I'm personally really, really excited about. You know, at Disney, we're always looking at ways to extend our stories and to grow those stories within our parks. Well, we started working on something really exciting over in Adventureland that extends the story of Pirates of the Caribbean. Yo ho, yo ho, pirates left for me. <laughs> <laughs> we are developing a brand new tavern that some of the regulars might call Watering Hole, where pirates of all ages gather to tell their tales. And I hear there's a certain macaw that we haven't seen in a while. Anybody remember the Barker Bird? Yes. They used to be out in front of the pirates? Yes, yes. Well, he's taken up residence here in a new spot, and you know he loves to come in and spin a yarn or two uh, with guests. So it's gonna be great seeing him again. Look, these designs are really, really early in the process, but we're really looking forward uh, to where this is headed. And as soon as we know more, we'll run up our flag and share it with you. So just like Fozzie, I think my time's up. Now let's go from bears and birds to animals of all kind as we travel over to Zootopia land in Shanghai. Then, I know, cool. Then my friends Kartika Rodriguez and Scott Malis will be here to share a little bit more with you about Epcot. So thank you everyone, have a great D23. Hello from Zootopia, the first mammal metropolis ever at a Disney theme park. We're busy partnering with Zootopia's Department of Public Works, applying the city's finishing touches before all the mammals move in. When guests step foot into Zootopia, they'll feel completely immersed as the city comes to life all around them. 
from Lemmings, heading to work on the Zootopia Transit Authority. Take a self backup dancer celebrating Zootopia Day. We're using our best technical know-how to create one of the most innovative and alive experiences that we've ever created. Zootopia will feature an original, jaw-dropping attraction. On Zootopia Hot Pursuit, guests must rise to the challenge when the first day as rookie recruits takes an unexpected turn. Using the latest in-show and trackless ride technology, guests will be whisked away on an out-of-control police chase they will never forget. We even infuse the world with inspiration from urban Shanghai to immerse guests in a world that's authentically Disney, distinctly Chinese. See you, See you soon! soon. talk about our favorite park. Yes, we do. <laughs> so why don't we go ahead and get started? That's right. I know we're both just huge fans of Epcot, right? I think there's a few fans of Epcot out here in this room. Right? Well, I know I'm biased, but I just love walking through the park. And those walks are about to get even better real soon. Would you like to tell them the good news? Absolutely. We are so excited to share that the last of our three new neighborhoods, World Celebration, We'll begin welcoming guests this December. So Epcot is all about celebration. It has always been the people park and it continues on as a celebration of our global community. And wait till you see what World Celebration is all about when it's finished, We're really close. It unites the front of the park, which I hope you guys love, tying together these other two lands and two neighborhoods that we're talking about now, World Discovery and World Nature. So speaking of world nature, I hope everyone is looking forward to Journey of Water inspired by Moana. This beautiful, yes. This beautiful new walkthrough trail will teach you all about the water cycle. And you'll get to play and become friends with water, just like Moana did in the film. We know you're gonna love this experience, which is why I am thrilled to share Journey of Water inspired by Moana will officially open on October 16th. But that's not all. I know you'll be excited for this too. Everyone here will get the chance to experience Journey of Water tonight. Woo! Woo! I have one more for you. One more. Because I can share for the first time, Moana herself is coming to World Nature 2. Beginning October 16th, she'll begin greeting guests in her own new dedicated space near Journey of Water. Yeah, <laughs> that's great, right? All right, we've got so much more to say about Epcot in our panel later today, so we hope you'll stick around and join us. Help not notice, you have not addressed my favorite part of the park, World Showcase, especially the pavilion in which I take the most pride, the American Adventure. Home to the glorious Regal Eagle Smokehouse. This restaurant, in my esteemed opinion, offers the greatest food ever served in the history of Epcot. <laughs> Excuse me, Sam. Uh, <laughs> oh, hello, everybody. Uh, Dr. Bunsen Honeydew here from Muppet Labs. <clears throat> Sam, I'm so sorry, but I must disagree. The Muppet Brew Wing Lab is inside the Epcot Odyssey Pavilion, and it represents the pinnacle of this park's culinary concoctions. I heartily object. The Regal Eagle Smokehouse is the heart of the World Showcase experience. <laughs> no, 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 no. The Muppet Brew Wing Lab truly pursues this park's values of innovation and exploration. Barbecue. Pickles. Barbecue. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on guys. I know who just this for us. What? President. The president? Oh. He's here? Good to have 
happy here at Walt Disney World. Dr. Honeydew, Sam, great to see you both. Your Excellence, it is an honor to be in the presence of <laughs> the president. <laughs> no, Sam, no, Sam, Sam. No, I, I think you were expecting someone else. I am the president, but I'm the president of Walt Disney World. Yeah. Oh, well, I am also a fan of Walt Disney World and of you, <laughs> Mr. President. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. I'm a big fan of yours. I agree. You both made some great menus for our guests. So let's give them a chance to taste your work. How about that? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So in honor of the Disney 100 celebration, 100 of you will receive a $100 Disney dining card as a thank you for being with us today. How about that? Yeah. My friends here would suggest you might want to use it in the Brew Wing Lab or Regal Eagle, so you can help this decision. How's that sound, guys? Yes, absolutely. You and I find compromise in subtle. But your suggestion is a shining example of democracy at work. Let the people decide. Oh, I concur. This will be a grand experiment. Let the best barbecue win. Or milkshake. The pickle variety is undeniably the best. A pickle milkshake? <laughs> Are you out of your mind? <laughs> Sam, it's so funny that you would ask that question. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right, now that we have that set up, Cartiga first, Scott, thank you so much for what you and your teams do each and every day at Epcot. It's amazing work, and we, and we all love it. And you've shared some great information with our fans. But you know what, Sam was right. We haven't talked about World Showcase yet. So you mind if I pop in here? Absolutely. Okay. All, right. All right. You guys may know that we're working on our next time, nighttime spectacular at Epcot. You heard about that? Yeah. All right. Well, here's some news. The show is going to debut on December 5th of this year. Yeah. You want to hear the name? All right. The name of the show is going to be Luminous. The Symphony of Us. <laughs> Brand new show filled with fireworks, fountains, lasers, lighting effects, fabulous Disney music. Luminous is going to touch your heart and it's going to continue our long tradition of amazing nighttime entertainment at Epcot. I cannot wait for you to see it. I totally agree, Jeff. The show is going to be incredible. That's right. And as you know, we're fond of saying around here at Epcot, Epcot is always in a state of becoming. We are constantly looking for ways that we can enhance our park. And we have a long-standing relationship with Chevrolet, one of our corporate alliance partners who helps us do just that. They're very focused on innovation and the future of how we will travel across this planet of ours, which is why I'm so pleased to tell you that we're working with Chevrolet to once again reimagine the test track experience. <laughs> We're reaching back into the history of the pavilion, taking inspiration from the original world of motion, and bringing that spirit of optimism to this next iteration of Test Track. So we know how much you all love this attraction, so I know you'll be excited for this. Test Track will open tonight as a part of your exclusive Epcot event. So you're going to have it all to yourself. I've seen the ideas that the Imagineers are dreaming up with Chevrolet for the future of this attraction, and you're going to love them too. Kartika, many thanks to you, <laughs> Scott, for being here, sharing the great news, and for letting me join you out here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Sure thing, Jeff. All right, next up, Thomas Maslin will be here, and he will tell us all about Disney's signature experiences. But first, let's hear from our friends at Disneyland Paris. As you can see, we are right in front of the gorgeous Disneyland Hotel. It's going through this royal transformation from the spectacular lobby to the luxurious bedrooms and suites. Let's have a look inside. What better way to start your own story than in the Grand Library? As you can see behind me, things are going at full swing. The Royal Banquet Restaurant is possibly one of my favorite spaces in the hotel. Think of it as a grand reception hall with four different rooms, each of them celebrating one different aspect of royalty. And we'll be celebrating fan favorite stories such as Princess and the Frog, Robin Hood, and even the Emperor's New Groove. Look at the return to ceiling. It really is the centerpiece of the hotel. And it really summarizes this journey through time, through culture that Disneyland Hotel is all about. We cannot wait to see you all in Disneyland Hotel in 2024. 
I'm standing here in the middle of the uh, huge Walt Disney Studio Park expansion site. We have just finished the lake water proofing system and here is one of the few rock works that we have just started. Elsewhere around the lake, we started the table service restaurant works and uh, we will soon begin the groundbreaking of our attraction tangle. See behind me, we're standing in the frozen lagoon where our castle is starting to take shape with our theme plaster began this week. Our theme facades are also happening on this side of the lake uh, in preparation for the lake fill. Behind me, we can see our iconic clock tower, which will be the future main entrance to the attraction. We're also making progress around the world on our audio animatronics figures uh, to bring our characters to life. We look forward to showing you more. See you soon. Hello, Destination D23. I'm Thomas Maslum, and I'd like to welcome you today on behalf of our Disney Signature Experiences family. You know, through our incredible collection of experiences, guests can truly discover the magic of Disney beyond the parks. Because, you know, we offer unforgettable adventures in every corner of the world. We have magical ocean voyages, on the high seas aboard the Disney Cruise Line fleet. We have guided tours across all seven continents with Adventures by Disney and National Geographic Expedition. Our first story living by Disney residential community is set to debut in California. And of course, we have a beautiful and spectacular portfolio of Disney Vacation Club resorts. And I bet, yes, I bet, we have some Castaway Club members, some Adventures Insiders, and of course some Disney Vacation Club members in the audience here today, right? Give us a clap. Give us a clap. Great. Thank you all. Thank you all so very much for being part of our magical experiences around the world. But you know what? Today, we're going to focus on Disney Cruise Line, where we, yes, where we are preparing for a period of growth unlike anything, unlike anything we've ever experienced before. Right now, are you ready for this? Right now, we have three, three new ships in development, along with a brand new island destination in the Bahamas on the Luthra. And trust me when I tell you, there's some pretty awesome, great collaboration happening right now between our teams and some unbelievably talented artists and cultural advisors in the Bahamas. Because, you know, together we're gonna shape an experience that truly celebrates the natural beauty, the traditions, the artistry of this one-of-a-kind nation. And take it from me, with some stunning, stunning, with a stunning shoreline that overlooks vast, vivid blue waters, it's only fitting that we are going to call this brand new island destination Lookout Key at Lighthouse Point. And I can tell you, we all can't wait for our guests on board the three night preview cruise next year on the Disney Magic, June 6th out of Fort Lauderdale. These guests will be the first to get a glimpse at Disney Lookout Key at Lighthouse Point. But of course, I have to tell you, we are also so, so, so excited, if you can't see it, to expand the Disney Cruise Line fleet next year with the debut of our brand new ship, the Disney Treasure. And I can tell you, the Disney Treasure, she will truly, truly, truly blend brand new experiences with the beloved traditions we know, we know you enjoy when cruising with us. And there are several spaces we're bringing to life for the very first time aboard a Disney cruise ship. And by the way, if you haven't had a chance to watch the reveal that we had a few days ago, we hosted it, please, please, please make sure you go back and you catch the replay on the Disney park blocks for some pretty incredible details. But I do have a sneak peek I wanna share with you today. Here is a look at the progress we're currently making on the Disney treasure at our shipyard in Germany. And what you can see here is the Grand Hall right in the middle there. 
And this will be the central hub and the connection point to all the incredible Disney storytelling that will come to life on board this brand new ship. And take it from me, it's gonna be absolutely spectacular. But that's not all. I have so much more about Disney Cruise Line. How about this? The very first Disney ship to sail from Singapore and throughout Southeast Asia. This seven ship in our fleet is currently on the way in Germany and will feature, of course, the Disney service, the storytelling and the entertainment we know you love. But there is something you haven't heard yet. You want to know the name of the ship? Yeah. Oh, you can do better. Do you want to know the name of the ship? Yeah. Well, let's just say on this ship, our guests are going to embark on an adventure like any other, unlike any other. So, the Disney Adventure is the perfect name for this magnificent addition to our Disney Cruise Line fleet. Aboard the adventure, the families will go on a fantastical voyage across the sea, experiencing Disney, Pixar, Marvel stories, representing truly every corner of the Disney world and beyond, and that's without ever leaving the ship. <laughs> but needless to say, this will be our biggest adventure yet. Well, this was just a quick glimpse at all the excitement ahead for Disney Cruise Line. But before I wrap up, I have, of course, a very, very special surprise for you. Are you ready for a surprise? Yeah. Well, based on your destination D23 event registration and a random selection, one incredible fan here in the audience right now will receive a vacation on board the Disney Treasure, the brand new Disney Treasure when it sets sail. Are we ready to find out who the recipient is? Yeah. Are we ready? Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> well, congratulations to Heather Motes. Heather? Yeah. Heather? <laughs> Heather, you have been... Oh, uh, here we go. Oh. Heather has been randomly selected to set sail on the Disney treasure. Here we go. Oh. Heather. And Heather, remember Heather, you can bring up to three guests with you. Up to three guests with you, okay? Congratulations again. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. So great to see you. Again, honestly, I, I cannot wait for all of you to experience the magic of the Disney treasure, the Disney adventure, and of course, look out key at Lighthouse Point. And in the spirit of adventure, we have something very, very, very special for each of you today. And this is a beautiful print of this commemorative map celebrating the launch of the Disney treasure. You know, this is truly an unprecedented time of growth at Disney Signature Experiences. And I, I have to tell you, I could not be prouder and more privileged to lead an incredibly wonderful, wonderful team. But also, many, many, many thanks to all of you, to all of you for helping us to chart our course to adventure and magic. And speaking of charting adventures, let's check out the next port of call at Tokyo Disney Sea, Fantasy Springs. Tokyo Disney Sea. Fantasy Springs will be the eighth theme port here at Tokyo Disney Sea, one that is inspired by magical springs leading to a world of Disney fantasy. It's comprised of three distinct areas based on the love story. In Peter Pan's Neverland, where we're standing now, the area will feature two attractions and one restaurant. In the attraction, Peter Pan's Neverland Adventure, guests will fly on boats and help Peter Pan and Pete rescue Wendy's brother, who's been kidnapped by Captain Hook. In Rapunzel Forest, based on the film Tangled, guests can board a boat in Rapunzel's Lantern Festival and experience Rapunzel's best day ever as she falls in love with Glenn Ryder on a romantic gondola ride. 
Deadly Duckling is a counter service restaurant themed at the tavern of the same name you may remember from the film. Here, guests can enjoy a meal in a variety of indoor and outdoor spaces themed to the story of the lovable pub thugs. And over in the Frozen Kingdom, the third new area in Fantasy Springs, where the gates of Arendelle have been opened and guests for the first time are invited in. In Anna and Elsa's Frozen Journey, guests board a boat and relive the tale of the two sisters. And along the journey, guests will be able to enjoy their favorite songs from the movie, and the experience will be its own unique offering, different from other Frozen-themed attractions around the world. In addition, the Tokyo Disney Sea Fantasy Springs Hotel, a deluxe hotel with its own luxury wing, will be the most luxurious accommodations ever at Tokyo Disney Resort. And, and that's all for now from Fantasy, Fantasy Springs. Springs. trombone that didn't get much better. Uh, gotcha. <laughs> All right, well, for the next few minutes, I want to focus on the future of Disney parks. While I can't bring all of you inside Walt Disney Imagineering, although I would love to, I can bring a little Imagineering to you. Because as I mentioned earlier, I want to show you how these amazingly talented people go about their work. And I think I've got just the guy for you. Everyone, please welcome our Chief Creative Officer for Walt Disney Imagineering, Mr. Bruce Vaughn. That's good music for you. I like it. Yeah, yeah. We'll keep that Just for you. Thank you. <laughs> Bruce, welcome to D23. Thank you, Josh. It's great to be here and with all these fans. <laughs> So good to have you. So Bruce, uh, during your time with Imagineering, you've done a lot of cool things. You've led uh, research and development. You've been part of some of the biggest projects that, that we've ever done at Disney. And you've led a team of uh, Imagineers. But you also spent some time uh, outside of Disney. How did that time away kind of help you think about things as you come back to parks? Well, you know, it's been incredible returning to Imagineering and it's an honor, and I thank you for the opportunity, uh, quite frankly. But I'll tell you, the most uh, uh, powerful thing was being away just reminded me how special this place is. I, it is amazing. Yeah, I, I can imagine. And now that you're back, I want to continue a conversation about the future that I started around this time yes. uh, last year. Mm -hmm. Now at D23 Expo in Anaheim, uh, I'm sure you probably saw that we shared some ideas that were under consideration specifically for, for Walt Disney World. <laughs> yeah, I caught some of that. So did you see some <laughs> of that? <laughs> well, I think, I think by the end of that chat, we left some people really excited. Maybe some people were wondering exactly what we were up to. And by the way, I think that's completely okay. Well, you know, Josh, I was actually kind of surprised when I heard it actually. Because I think, as you all know, we usually wait until we get everything perfect before we talk about any of our big ideas. Yeah, you do. <laughs> but I've been challenging, challenging all of us to maybe think a little bit differently. That includes, you know, myself. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I want to use these D23 events as an open conversation. I see this as a chance to give some insight and, mm -hmm. in, into how the Imagineers approach uh, new projects and what the creative process is. Oh, well, I love that because, you know, we do so much work before a shovel ever hits the ground. Uh, ideas shift, uh, stories adapt. This is a very, very uh, fluid and constantly changing process, and we call it the blue sky process. I'm sure most of you know that. Uh, but that exploration is vital to how we are able to develop all these great attractions. And yep, places. so uh, maybe we do some more exploring today and keep that conversation from a year ago going. So tell us about Magic Kingdom. Uh, well, when I came back, this was one of the first projects I dug into. And I, I had heard we had big ideas for this park, but I'm gonna tell you all, I was blown away by the scope of what we're planning. I mean, this is similar in scale to things like Star Wars, Galaxy's Edge, or Pandora, the World of Avatar. 
I actually think this could be the biggest thing we've done in the Magic Kingdom, probably even bigger than uh, New Fantasyland. And it should be, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking about Magic Kingdom here. This is yep. the most popular theme park in the world. It's been that way for decades. Yep. And I, right? Woo! To Magic Kingdom. <laughs> I think it deserves the very best, and I know there are places in the park where we can bring some big, big new stories to life that our guests will absolutely love. Yes, well, last year you said we're looking to tell stories beyond Big Thunder Mountain, which is still true. I mean, there's a lot of room to play with around there. <laughs> and we're looking at the possibility of adding new attractions, restaurants, shows, you, you dream it, we're, we're thinking about it. And uh, like I said, uh, the ideas are looking really great. Now, I know everybody wants to hear a little bit more. There's still <laughs> a long way to go, but I just want all of our fans to know that we are about to go into overdrive mm -hmm. at the Magic Kingdom. Yep. And I am looking forward to spending more time with your team as we keep refining these ideas yep. to create something really special that every single person in here is going to love. Yeah, for sure. And getting to add anything to the Magic Kingdom, as you know, is one of the most special things you can work on. But add to it the size and scale of yeah. your thinking, and that is exactly what every Imaginary dreams about. All right, I'm gonna jump to uh, another theme park here at okay. Walt Disney World, yeah. because I know those blue sky conversations have continued for Disney's Animal mm -hmm. Kingdom uh, over the past year. So uh, why don't we uh, catch our fans up and maybe give a little detail on what's happening over there. Okay, absolutely. Uh, last year you shared an initial concept for Animal Kingdom that was one of many we were exploring at the time. And we've done uh, some deep dives uh, since then and a lot more brainstorming, many with you, you're yeah, there. Uh, for example, last year you talked about the possibility of bringing Zootopia to the park. Now we're still excited about that idea, only now we're exploring a new location to bring this story to life. And with that, I'm happy to share here for the first time, we're creating a new show for the Tree of Life based on Zootopia. Yeah. <laughs> Our current concept is filled with humor and action, taking you into the different biomes you see in the film and some you have yet to see yet. Uh, we'll meet Judy Hopps, Nick Wilde, and my favorite, a fantastic Flohauser animatronic. It's going to be great. Well, I, you know, like I get to play with you guys all the time on this, and I've loved what I've seen so far. I think you guys are going to love it. But <laughs> if Zootopia is going to Tree of Life, why don't you share what the team's now thinking about for the future of Dinoland USA? Mm, okay. Well, as you know, we've had Africa and Asia-inspired Asia areas since the park opened 25 years ago. And we've done a lot to enhance both of those through the years. But we thought, big picture, where else could we take our guests? We're looking at reimagining Dinoland into something completely new. We're focusing on a region of the world sometimes referred to as the Tropical Americas. This, this is the area around the equator here in the Western Hemisphere, basically the northern part of South America stretching up into Central America. And we've, it's gonna be we've, we've been talking about how well this part of the world fits into an animal kingdom, right? Yeah, well, these are the most biodiverse areas on the planet, places uh, people travel for adventure, exploration, discovery, it's a great fit. So you know this already, I love where mm -hmm. this is heading. How do you see this region meshing into the rest of the park? Well, we're imagining a land filled with authentic experiences from this part of the world, with all of the placemaking and storytelling you'd expect. Look, it's a beautiful region to explore and has been the inspiration for so many magical stories over the years. We're looking forward to bringing all of that to life at Animal Kingdom. Okay, so <laughs> any specific stories well, that, that on, you guys. have maybe <laughs> in No, we can't. Mind. We can't. No. <laughs> We're not supposed to be talking about that right now. <laughs> sorry, sorry. It won't happen again, Josh. Okay. <laughs> They're bad. They are bad. <laughs> well, they're good. Uh, well, what I can talk about is how we're diving deep into our research, and honestly, we couldn't be more excited about bringing this to life. Yeah, I imagine that you're probably doing a lot of work on uh, you know, casitas, maybe, maybe, maybe things maybe, like that. Well, I know every time that we've <laughs> met with the team, the concepts, they just keep getting better and better. It's supposed to be a secret, Josh. You just, want to, you just want to do the whole show? I mean, <laughs> it happened again. So it sorry. It happened again. Wow. This is how we're going to start pitching uh, ideas. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Name that too. <laughs> well, well, honestly, Josh, as you know, we are 
whipping up some new ideas. <laughs> all right, well, I know we're, we're having some fun up here with all of you, but this is really important work for us and obviously for all of you because we are building on what makes Animal Kingdom so, so special. Yeah, it is a special park. Um, in fact, this is where uh, we celebrate the value of our natural world and our connection to animals, and then go out and seek amazing adventures. Yep, and, and so I know we're searching for ways to extend the overall story of Animal Kingdom. In Kanto and Indiana Jones are two of the most popular stories <laughs> that we've ever told. It, it doesn't feel like a natural fit for this park. It does. You know, it all starts with the foundation of the tropical Americas region. Um, and as we've been talking about stories from this part of the world, Encanto and Indiana Jones just rose to the top. Uh, they give us so much to play with. We have a long way to go now and yes. a lot more to discover, but our team here in Florida is all over it. Okay, well, that all sounds great, and I know this is part of a much broader plan that we have for all of our destinations, destinations around the world. Yeah, absolutely. Look, <laughs> I came back for a reason, because we have incredible ideas for new experiences at all our destinations around the world, as you said, but stretching out through the rest of this decade and beyond. Disney, you know, this company has such a wealth of stories and characters that we can draw and inspire from. And what I love is how the Imagineers can work with all the filmmakers to expand those stories and translate them into the real world experiences for our guests. Yeah, and like I've been saying, this company has the absolute best storytellers. And of course, that includes you, my friend. It's so great to have you back at, uh, at Imagineering. Well, yeah. <laughs> thanks for being here. Well, we're going to have you back, I think. Without, without the band, though. Well, no, it's the band. <laughs> well, I speak for all Imagineers when I say we couldn't be more excited about the future, and I am really happy to be back. And thank you all. You're you're what it's all about. Good song, everybody. Well, there you have it. Uh, I hope you can see our future is certainly looking bright, and we are proud to lead the way for this industry. When theme parks deliver new experiences, that is good for everyone. But Disney charts the course for our future. Seven of the 10 most popular theme parks around the globe, those are Disney parks. And that didn't happen by accident. We didn't just somehow get lucky because we invented this. Since before the gates opened at Disneyland in 1955, our Imagineers have been the cornerstone of creativity in this business. This is who we are. This is what we do and we do it better than anyone. I have people come up to me all the time and say, only Disney could have done that. And you know what? That is music to my ears because it's true. Just think about what you've heard today. New lands. We're gonna be bringing you new attractions, new ships, and entire parks transformed. But we aren't approaching the end of the story by any means here. It's just the start of a brand new chapter. We are gonna speed up, we are not gonna slow down. We have, as Bruce said, the best stories. We have the most space to work with, and we have the most talented people in the industry. And over the next decade, we're gonna have more projects underway than at any point in our history. Any point in our history. We are planning to invest billions of dollars in our destinations around the world. Listen, innovation is finally catching up with our imagination, and there's plenty of imagination left in our world. It's gonna be kind of fun to do the impossible again. And all of you, our amazing Disney fans, you are the secret to it all. You inspire us every single day. Our sole purpose is to give you more and more of what you love about a Disney experience, and then surprise and delight you with things that you never dreamed were possible. Because a Disney experience, this is a story that we live, it's a story we breathe, it's a story that we all feel. It brings out the best in us, inviting us into a place where anyone is welcome and everyone believes in happily ever afters. This is a place filled with joy and wonder and happiness where the memories we make become stories that we share over and over again. At the end of the day, my job is to give you a magical experience every single time that you're with us. To help you leave your cares behind and enter that Disney bubble that we all crave. And believe me, everyone, I know how high your expectations are. And I wouldn't have it any other way because I have those same expectations. 
all I ask of you in return, come and join us. We're looking to the future, out beyond the horizon where dreams are made. I said earlier, we are daring to dream bigger than ever before. Well, I'm daring you to dream right along with us, and you will be glad that you did. It might be impossible to believe this, but your best Disney memory, it is yet to come. And listen, our great big beautiful tomorrow, that starts today. So thank you everyone for being here at Destination D23, and of course, thank you to the Muppets for making this morning extra special. Before we go, before we go, I have one last surprise for my friend Dave here. Get over here, Dave. You're obviously most famous for your work with the Muppets, right? But you have a special connection to another character. Yes! <laughs> who can only be found here at Walt Disney World. And this is one of my favorite characters. And I know a lot of people love him here too. I thought it might be fun to bring him out to meet you, of course, and to meet all of our fans. What do you guys say? You want to meet him? All right, guys, let's bring him out. so excited to tell you that Figment will be ready to meet his fans in person starting tomorrow inside the Imagination Pavilion at Epcot. And you all are going home today with a special figurine of Figment himself. And in honor of this special occasion, I've asked our Walt Disney World cast choir and our global ambassadors to lead us in a song that I think speaks to everything that we've been talking about today. How about you all join us for one little spark? Thank you all for being here. I'll see you all real soon. All right, D23, let's sing it together.
Uh, great show, everyone. Uh, hey, boss. Mm -hmm. Did anyone figure out who Dave is? Uh, I'm afraid not, Scooter. Hmm. <laughs>